Students develop, test, and refine prototypes as part of a cyclical design process. Today, uh, my orchestra kids and advanced band kids will be using their traditional acoustic instruments and they're going to be trying to augment them uh, with a digital interface. That's perfect, but you just need to, to limit the amount of repeats you have in the coding. This started out as introducing non-musicians to music by them creating their own instrument and something easy to interact with. Now try touching it. See that now you're triggering it. So now what I would do is I would connect the rest and then get a way to attach this to your violin, okay? They actually reflect on their design and that reflection is what drives their next prototype, obviously, and that's where the real learning happens. So that's something you would need to address in the next prototype. What, what is causing your prototype to not play consistently? So let's take a look here. But I learn so much from the students as well. I'll have my lesson planned out, expecting to go this way, and then I'll have a student say, well, what if we tried it this way? I'm like, what if we tried it that way? That's a great idea. You changed the sound. You distorted the violin. Now you can play rock violin. <laughs> so bringing arts students, music students, into the makerspace helps students that may be creative with the arts feel more empowered to be creative with technology. If it fails the first time or isn't good the first time, guess what you get? You get a second <laughs> chance, a second chance to make it right. 